This recipe is going to be based off of Goku, which technically means aware of emptiness. His name was also derived from Sun Wukong from Journey to the West. Now his other name is Kakarot, which it's basically carrot. All the Dragon Ball characters are basically named after a food. Now the first thing we need to do is get our rice started because apparently I didn't have rice ready at this time. Make sure you get your rice triple washed and place this in your rice cooker. And then we're gonna move on to the rest of the mise en place. Now for the carrot portion of this, I'm using two whole carrots that we're just going to peel and make sure that they're nice and clean before we hit them with our box grater. Find the medium size grater on your box and start grating all of your carrots to get this nice shredded stuff that you would typically use for like a coleslaw. Now also make sure you use a guard or something to keep your knuckles safe and don't do what I just did. Now that you have all of your beautifully shredded carrot, make sure you wash your hands so you don't get orange all over the place. Now place your carrots into a bowl of choice and we're gonna bring this over to the sink so this way we can soak our carrots. The reason why we're soaking the carrots is to actually remove a lot of that orange color, but also it's going to make them super crispy. Adding in ice also helps firm up the carrots so this way when you use it for our slaw later, you're not going to have it completely disintegrate. Let this hang out until we're ready to use it. Now the next thing is going to be some ginger. Is there a character named after ginger in Dragon? Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Super or any of those Dragon Ball, is there? Just, just make sure you peel the ginger. Everyone's like, Paul, just use a spoon to peel your ginger. Well, you know what? This is already dirty. Probably have to get a spoon dirty later, but this still. Now for the ginger, I'm going to slice this super thin on my mandolin and make sure again, you use a guard here, maybe. Super thin, look at, see that? How thin that is? That's how thin we want them, super thin. Now make sure you get all that ginger sliced super thin to where they almost look like potato chips. Stack these up really nicely and then grab your knife and start slicing these into a really thin julienne. This is gonna give you these really beautiful needle points that you're looking for. They're also just about the same size as the shredded carrot, so keep that in mind when you're actually cutting all of your ginger. Oh, pro tip, you're probably not gonna need all of this. It's just like a little, little pile of joy, a little pile of delicious epicness. So many adjectives. Adjectives aside, grab a few small cucumbers and slice these super thin with a knife or, you know, just a mandolin. It's gonna take way too long. Just get a mandolin, look. Is it slicing? It's not slicing, is it? Now, after making a few fine adjustments, your mandolin should be ready to go. Look at it, look at this. Yeah, maybe one more. Get it for the people in the back. You guys wanna see the most extra thing that I own? Look at this, what is this? A uh, salt block with its own microplane? Come on, how do you even use this? Just broke my salt block. It's good salt though. I don't know why I bought this. After many regrets about buying a salt block that you're probably never gonna use, take all those cucumbers and place them into a bowl and this is gonna be one of our garnishes. Now the tomatoes we're not going to cut right up until we're ready to plate this because if you cut them super thin right now, they're just gonna bleed all over the place and it's gonna turn into mush, so just leave these whole. And now, for the parsley. We're gonna remove every leaf from every stem. Yes, we are removing every leaf from every stem. This is actually going to allow us to make beautiful parsley flakes later. I'm not doing the whole bunch, that's silly. Now after doing about half a bunch of parsley, we have our beautiful pile ready to go. Now, we have all of the leaves off of those stems. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want a very dry parsley that we're gonna use as a garnish. Now start rolling up all of your parsley with one hand and use your knife in the other to start chopping it up. You wanna make sure that you're basically giving it a shift Vanade at first and then start doing a nice rough chop with your parsley. Continue doing this for just about two to three minutes until you get really nice bits of parsley. Once you have your parsley all nicely chopped up, place this onto a dry paper towel and then roll it together. Make sure that you do press this gently into the paper towel so this way you remove any excess moisture from the parsley. This is gonna keep it nice and dry so this way we can sprinkle it on beautifully later. Let this hang out until we're ready to use it. Next up is some lemon zest. Since can you stop, stop spinning it, stop spinning the lemon. Where is my zester? I can't find Anything. After finding your zester, zest one whole lemon, making sure you remove as much of the zest as possible without removing any of the white part or the pith. Make sure you keep that lemon because we do need to juice it. Now place all of your lemon zest onto a paper towel and do the same thing by rolling it up like you did with the parsley to keep it nice and dry. This is gonna be one of our garnishes. And I'll make a bit of vinaigrette, well, kind of a vinaigrette. We're gonna take equal parts oil with our lemon juice and just mix it together. That's all we're using for this is just oil and, and lemon juice, you know, super easy. Remember how I was saying I didn't wanna use a spoon to peel the ginger earlier. Dostingo. Now we just have the carrots. Yep. Now you should just do this over the sink and strain the carrots, but because I want to show you guys the sink's over there, I'm just gonna use another bowl. We used to use this method a lot for, for buffets and making slaws and stuff like that because it actually preserves the slaw longer, even if you're gonna dress it. And you see all that all that orange carroty water at the bottom? That doesn't end up saturating whatever you put this into. So it's actually a really nice method for trying to not make everything orange in a way. I should have fished out the ice earlier, that was stupid. After fishing out your ice, make sure you do give the carrots a nice squeeze to remove any excess liquid because remember, you want this to be super dry. Look at the difference in this carrot now. It's almost like you can just sprinkle it on whatever you want. 
Uh-uh. After tasting carrot water, which is not very delicious, grab a bowl, place a paper towel into the bowl, and then gently sprinkle all of that carrot. You don't have to sprinkle the carrot. Just place all the carrot onto the paper towel, and this is going to help further dry it, so that way when we dress it, it stays nice and dry. Now, if anything, this isn't real sushi. This is probably closer to some kind of an onigiri, but in sushi form. Sorry if I offend any purists out there. This is just what's happening. And now we have to go for the technique, but first... Oh, that's hot. Oh, that's hot. Now take about 200 grams worth of rice and place onto a half sheet bamboo roller. Then remove the roller and place it back on top, making sure that you're using that plastic covering to help form this piece of rice. Now, after you form your beautiful piece of rice that now looks like a rice covered Mars bar, you're going to make a second one of those because yes, you'll see where I'm going with this in a second. It's all gonna make sense in like seven to eight minutes. Not your time, my time. Now to finish off this rice, we're gonna take just a small amount of sesame oil and heat this over a medium high heat. Once that sesame oil runs freely, place your two Mars bars looking rice logs into that and let them get nice and crispy. After about four or five minutes, drizzle a bit more sesame oil on top and then give them a flip to get them nice and crispy on the other side as well. Just with this on, it has increased the sweat amount to like times, like KO Ken times 10. After three to four episodes of powering up, we can finally turn off the heat on those rice logs. I like crispy rice. I think it's delicious and very underutilized. So let this hang out in the pan. Yep. Now, while that's cooling down, we're gonna make a little bit of our kakaroto slaw. I'm just gonna use whatever was in this bowl. I think this was the rice. Just rinse this out real quick. Now, after you've cleaned out your bowl, sprinkle a generous portion of your shredded carrot directly into that. Hit this with some of your needlepoint ginger. Hit it with a pinch of salt, and then take a couple of spoons of your vinaigrette and place this directly onto your slaw. Give this a quick mix, making sure that it gets nice and coated. Make sure you give it a taste for seasoning. That shouldn't be allowed. Now, the last thing is a heavy pinch of your lemon zest right into your slaw and make sure that's fully combined as well. I wish you guys could smell this. I, w I, come on. Now, we do have to slice a couple of those tomatoes because we still need them to garnish everything with because this is gonna go on the bottom or I guess on the, on the top of the rice, but on the bottom of everything else, it'll make sense. Now you're gonna need an incredibly sharp knife to get these really, really thin slices of tomato. Like you want these paper thin, just about as thin as we cut the cucumbers earlier. So yes, I went through the painstaking process of slicing cherry tomatoes to get these really, really thin slices. So this way we can stack them into a beautiful presentation later. Alternatively, honestly, just chop up some tomato and it's gonna be fine. Now grab one of your rice covered Mars bars, placing the crispiest side down. Now we're going to alternate cucumber with tomato, cucumber with tomato, or tomato with cucumber, whichever you decide to go first, just make sure they're alternated to this beautiful finished product. Now do the same thing with the other side and then cut this in half because we need to get four pieces out of each and realize we've made a fatal mistake. Probably should have got my knife wet, that was stupid. Now after getting your knife wet, cut each half in half, giving you four total pieces and also realize you probably could have garnished this after after cutting the rice, which would have made it a bit nicer in the end. Either way, just get your pieces cut and ready to go. Now I'm being super extra with my carrot slaw by using these plate up tongs, but feel free just to grab a heavy pinch of it and place it on top of your rice, or just grab a bowl of rice and sear it off, make some crispy rice, and then throw everything on top and enjoy it. But if you're doing it this way, finish it off with some sesame seed, followed by some of your really beautifully dried parsley. Place this onto your plate of choice, which obviously this is the only plate I ever use. Hit this with a bit more of your lemon vinaigrette, then a bit of flaky salt, just to make sure it's nicely seasoned. And there it is, Goku, buddy's food. There it is, guys. My interpretation of Goku slash Kakarot. This one was a fun one to put together, especially with it being so incredibly hot outside. And it just looks super refreshing. I mean, I know it's not traditional sushi by any means and any stretch of the imagination, but it smells and looks good. I can't wait to, to go in on this, so cheers. It's crispy, it has some chew to it from all the vegetables. It has a slight acidity from the lemon juice, some saltiness, the sesame oil comes through. I really like this. The one thing it needs is some spice. I mean, we're already messing everything up, right? So we're just gonna use a little togarashi. I had such a beautiful plate. Now it looks even better, maybe? There it is, that's what it needed. I love this idea. And also let me know who you guys want me to try to interpret next. I think we can do a fun series with this and I would love your input down in the comments below. If you want the recipe, check out chefpk.com. My name is Chef PK, get subscribed. And remember, keep playing with your food. I'm gonna do this one.